All right, up next, coming to the stage, he runs comedy at McCormick's Irish Pub. Give it up for Jesse Jarvis. Thanks, buddy. Cafe Durham, what's up? <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. I greatly appreciate that shit and stuff. What's going on, man? I um, The other day, I saw this, uh, I saw this woman standing in line and uh, she had an upper back tattoo that said Strictly Business, which was an awesome tattoo. Uh, I, I don't exactly know what she meant by that, Strictly Business, because she was standing in the unemployment line. <laughs> but to be fair, though, her, her resume was a tramp stamp tattoo, so she's prepared for this economy. <laughs> Gotta give her credit for that. But, uh... But like, but you know the you know the economy is like really going bad when McDonald's keeps making commercials where they make it seem like it's okay for you to take your date there, which to me sounds like one of the white man's lies. But um, <laughs> like, I say this because the current commercial it's it's like they got this guy this McDonald's commercial he's having this inner monologue in his head and he's saying like, oh man, this seems like a really special girl. How do I show her how awesome I am? I could show her I'm a big spender, or I can get this 20-piece McNugget meal for $4.99. That way she'll see I'm really good with money. Like, no, there's no way she's going to think that, dude. You, you took her to McDonald's on a first date. Like, McDonald's is not where you go for a first date. McDonald's is where you go to sign the divorce papers. Like, that's just, like... But I think what that commercial is missing, though, is the female perspective, you know? Like, they needed her inner monologue in that commercial. I think it's missing. This is like, in her head, she's thinking, man, I went on a date with this guy because I wanted to try new things. The, the quarter pounder Angus burger with bacon and avocado and ranch isn't exactly what I had in mind. But, uh, but I like how this guy thinks that he's going to get laid after eating 20 chicken McNuggets. That's what I like. It's like, dude, the only romance you're getting is like an insulin shot to your ass and falling asleep on your couch to a burn notice marathon. Like, that's all you're going to get, buddy. Enjoy it. And that's the thing with those commercials, man. Like the, me like, the media can do that. They can make us think whatever they want. The media has this fucking train like sheep. They do. And it, like, because they know they're, we, they're the, the source of all of our information. Like, they know this. And it, like, it's, it's, ugh, fuck. <laughs> it's a new bit. But it's like, but like, they know, they know this. Is if they wanted to make us believe somehow that Charles Barkley won the Nobel Peace Prize for his work with Weight Watchers, like, all they have to do is just Photoshop him with a meatball sub, just shaking Desmond Tutu's hand or something. Twitter makes a thing about it. And I say this because, of like, in the like the f whole Fast and the Furious controversy that was in the news recently, and it's not the the controversy isn't that they made five movies. It's um. <laughs> <laughs> the controversy is the whole the US selling weapons to Mexico in their drug cartels for profit, right? That was the controversy. Big deal made out of it. Then it turns out kind of made up. Not exactly true. But what's fucking weird is like Fortune Magazine's the one who broke the fraud in the story. Like, like, like when Fortune Magazine breaks a fake news controversy while selling an ad for golf clubs right next to it. It's a really sad day for journalism, you know? That's like Highlights Magazine exposing the childhood obesity epidemic. It's like, well, our research shows that, uh, and our seek and finds the kids kept finding the piece of ice cream cake before anything else. Um, don't ask how, I, how they know it's ice cream cake. I don't fucking know it. It's a fat kid thing. I write for Highlights Magazine. What do I know about shit? <laughs> Get out of here on this. I realize this, guys. Uh, I'm never going to be a sex symbol. Can you believe that shit? I do. I this guy right here. Never going to be a sex symbol. But the thing is, I had this realization the other day at a 7-Eleven. That's where this hit me like a ton of bricks. And this is a public service announcement to you guys out there. If, uh, if you're standing at the counter and you're struggling to get the plastic straw into your drink, that is not going to be appealing to the attractive woman standing behind you in line. Like, there's no way. She's thinking like, oh, I can't get the plastic straw into the drink. Like, totally not fucking this guy. There's no way. Not even be a bitch. It's just biology. Not like if I got the straw into the drink, she was gonna fuck me anyway. You know, like I'm just like standing in line, looking at her all creepy, like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty more where that came from, sweetheart. 
Her girlfriend punched me so hard in the face. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But anyway, guys, thank you for letting me try out new stuff. Love you guys. Tip Tony a lot of money. Blah, blah, blah. All that shit. Good night! Give it up again for Jesse Jarvis. All right, next on the stage is Zach Petre. Hope I said that right. Whoa, what is up? I am higher than giraffe genitals right now. That shit's high. So, uh, I was walking down the street today and found this in a burning bush. And it's comedy notes, so I thought that I should come. <laughs> I'm really sick of reality TV. I'm sick of uh, bitches being famous for shit that's not really famous material. Kim Kardashian has a sex tape. I have like five. <laughs> Three of the girls are right there. <laughs> her, uh, her sister Courtney just uh, gets pregnant by that fucking loser Scott. That's all she does. Chloe, I can't talk shit about Chloe because she's the bodyguard. I'm serious, that's a big bitch. Her Facebook profile reads something like, uh, loves my husband Lamar Odom. Enjoys being famous for no reason. Fucking hates getting an erection. If, uh, if, if anybody here finds, that, finds me and wants to hook up Facebookily, that's a word now, um, Facebookily and they, dudes do not friend request me with your shirt off and your profile picture, your iPhone on the... <laughs> Don't fucking do that. I will not friend request you. I will not accept. If you have a car as your profile picture, on the other hand, I will assume you're a transformer and I will automatically friend you because you can never have too many transformer friends. Those motherfuckers will get you out of a fucking bind. <laughs> Nobody wants to fuck with a fucking Corvette that just turned into a giant dude that's a robot. I see your guns, Bumblebee. Calm down. Forget where I'm at. Oh, no, I don't. Facebook is getting fucking crazy. People, stop posting pictures of you with your paycheck when you just get it cashed. You didn't even put it in the bank. That's bullshit. Who doesn't put shit in the bank nowadays? That guy. The blue shirt on. He doesn't. I see it. Got 20s all over the place. Yeah, get like me, son. Baller. Fucking awesome. Status. I drive a... Capri. <laughs> Playa, that is your light bill. I hung out with you yesterday and you were ordering shit off the dollar value menu. <laughs> you are not a pimp. You are not a baller. We work together. You make a dollar less than me. I know this. I've seen the paperwork. Because I'm sneaky. Um, girls, ladies, you guys are great. But I think you have it made with sex. I really do. Always gets quiet. Bullshit, motherfucker. No, you do. You, you have to concentrate on the most awesome shit in the world to be able to get off. Skipping and bubbles and texting and talking pointlessly for fucking hours. I don't give a shit about how the dog's toenail clippings went to the... I fucking don't. Trying to watch sports soon. Do you know Ray Allen just signed to the Miami Heat? Shut the fuck up. You don't know that shit. Celtics fan. But guys, on the other hand, are the complete polar opposite. Sorry, I've been ignoring the fuck out of y'all. <laughs> guys, on the other hand, are the complete opposite. We have to concentrate about shit to not get off. You know I mean, talking about baseball stats, Ray Allen just signed to the Miami Heat, that's basketball, ladies, by the way. Um, grandma swinging titties. Shit's gross, but I'm still just... R&B stroke. That happens, I just mastered that stroke. Um... <laughs> 
We can't even look at you because you're so motherfucking pretty. We have to look at other shit on the room, just pumping up. Is that a motherfucking paint chip? As soon as I am fucking done, I'm gonna get that. Hey, girls never apologize for coming first either. Girl apologized to me once for coming first, and I was like, I was four strokes away from being like, I'm so sorry. This never happens. Thank you. That was my A game. <laughs> Guys have to apologize. Girls can give sex as a birthday present. You forgot my birthday? No, honey, I didn't forget your birthday. <laughs> awesome. It's about my time, so uh, I appreciate everybody that's here. This is my first time doing this, so thank y'all for the support. Y'all have been fucking great. I'm Zach Petri. Have a good night. Okay, this works now. Okay. <laughs> Give it up for Zach. First time. Good job. Yeah. You are very sassy. Ooh. Okay. Uh, next on the stage is a female, April Dowdy. All right, everybody, how we doing? Yeah, fucking fake it, louder. Nothing? Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, give it up for Zach again, goddammit. I have to follow that shit. Fuck yeah. All right, so I know this is an open mic. Open mic means practice, so I'm reading shit, okay? Don't judge me. I walked in, I walked home earlier, right, from a long-ass day, and the only thing I could do as soon as my Spawn's creator spoke up is look at him and say, of all the sperm your father released, you're the one that made it. <laughs> awesome. But no, we got in an argument because he said that I was selfish. Right? Because I don't appreciate the last two gifts that he gave me. All right? And first of all, mind you, I've known this motherfucker for 11 years. Okay? And these two gifts that he's pouting and, and so proud of, the first time he ever gave me anything that he wasn't voluntold to do so. Okay? And so, this is where I'm reading, don't judge. <clears throat> so yeah, he, he's, he's pouting over these two gifts and, and he's so proud that he gave them to me. But um, it's not like we're talking about diamonds or furs or cars, oh my, no. <laughs> not at all, okay? These gifts suck, all right? They pound the carefree spirit and forgiving nature that I used to have right out of my vagina, okay? And so when I found out about the first gift, I was kind of flattered, but still disappointed at the lack of surprise. You know, I guess that's what happens when you don't wrap it up. Yeah, the gift. Yeah, the gift. Yeah, okay, it was made in America, so that's cool. You know, I'm all about supporting local businesses. That's cool. You know, um, I do play with it sometimes, as long as no one's at home watching me. You know, I can't have any witnesses. And then... Uh, it, it, it's still kind of iffy, but by the time he gave me the second gift and I realized it was the same fucking thing, I was pissed, all right? Not for the fact that it was the same thing, but the fact that he had the audacity to write on the card. I can't wait to take these in public and use both of them at the same exact time. I can take a lot, but that's a little much, right? Bear with me, I'm getting there. And so, you know, the bad part came when... I realized I couldn't even re-gift these things, right? I have two of the same thing, can't get rid of it. Because it'd be uncomfortable and awkward if I showed up to some bar mitzvah with this really big box that's beautifully wrapped, and they pick it up and start shaking it and find it, like, start to vibrate and roll around and hit the sides of the boxes, you know? And they'd look at me differently. They'd think I was less of a woman, you know? It'd be awkward. And so, basically, what I'm saying is, that I don't think it's me being selfish after all, you know? I didn't even ask for this shit to be thrust in my lap. So I keep them both in an open box in the back of the closet, out of sight, out of mind, you know? I pull one of them out at a time, play with it, toy around with it, clean it off, put it back, you know? 
the seven-year-old is fine with that, but the two-year-old gets offended. I really do like my kids, just not in public. All right, so I was doing this. I was doing this show. That was new. Fuck it. I was doing the show, and a preacher's wife came up to me afterwards, right? And she said, "You had really good material, but you spat too many profanities. You know, clean it up a bit." And so I looked at her and I said, "Excuse me, ma'am. I don't spew profanities. I enunciate them clearly, like a fucking lady." So needless to say, I'm not invited back to the Cookies for Christ gala at the Baptist church around the corner. It's bad. I was frowned upon. But um, let's see. Have you got you got like how many ladies by round of applause get your nails done regularly? Get your nails done. You like to get dolled up. Have y'all seen the bras? That everybody's seen it. The girls get their nails done. They're like long as shit, and they start to curl underneath. And they always want to wave them around and show them off because it's so fresh and glamorous. I think that's a sign of their poverty, right? They'll never be able to own an iPhone. No, oh, all right, it's new shit. Don't judge me. But let's see here. I also think that the world would be a much better place if some people had just been swallowed. All right. For for instance, all right. For instance, I was on my way to the show here tonight, and I passed this house. Like the windows were boarded up. It was wrapped in fucking plastic wrap. You know. And I couldn't help but think. I guess it was condemned. And I couldn't help but think that was really fucked up. Not only did they take these people's house, but they gift wrapped it for the next family that was going to move in. That's a step they didn't have to take, you know? But I'm not, maybe that's because it's, in, it's a Virginia thing. I'm not from Virginia, all right? I'm from Kentucky, right? And Kentucky is the kind of state, we don't have cities or towns. We have hollers, all right? A holler is a hole in a fucking mountain. It's usually the birthplace of ignorance and racism. <laughs> All right, like, I grew up in Clover Lick Holler, Kentucky, located at the top of Lynch Mountain. All right, and so my dad, we got, we moved out here, and it was my escape from Lynch Mountain. It was great. I thought it was gonna be a brand new day, but no, we moved into a house on South Confederate Avenue. Yeah. So what better way than me to celebrate that move with my mom than give her the news that her pretty white daughter lost her virginity to a black man in her house on South Confederate Avenue? Hold up, one more step in her bed that was lined with the rebel flag sheets. I was just trying to clean up the South one stroke at a time, people. All right, y'all. The one last thing I'm going to say is just remember that ignorance lives because wisdom refused to swallow. Do your duties, ladies. Thank you much. A for Dowdy, that's my time. One more time for A for Dowdy. Thank you.